Hi, Ethan Edwards here with another installment of On the Road with an Instructional Designer, where I look for lessons in unlikely places to help us as instructional designers think about creating better e-learning. Well, here I am in front of the 560 Music Center, part of Washington University here in University City, Missouri. And I just came out of a concert that was performed by a cello quintet called Sakura. They're out of Los Angeles. And it was a wonderful, wonderful concert. And um, I'm a cellist, and so it was interesting to me, but I think it should have been interesting to any musician. They did such a varied and um, uh, specific presentation, uh, a unique way of communicating through music. What was what brings me to this little video is thinking about the fact that it was a cello quintet. I don't believe in all my years I've ever heard a cello quintet before. There are cello quartets and, and once in a while cello octet, but um, this was something altogether unique. And, and so one thinks, well, why would they bother to come up with a, a quintet? Um, they had to come up with their own arrangements, um, and it's unexpected. Well, the thing is, they had a very specific message that required more than the traditional four voices. And in fact, by bringing those in, it created a very memorable and unique um, expression of music. Now, what does this have to do with e-learning? Well, it reminds me how often we have to make choices about our interactions. And too often, I think people um, come to writing a standard multiple choice question, and some will think it has to have four choices. Um, the result of that is that sometimes there aren't four reasonable alternatives and we're forced to come up with things that are actually sort of ludicrous. And in doing so, we limit the interaction. Um, sometimes uh, we have to limit it too much. Maybe there's 10 possible things a learner might do in a given situation. And by the question saying, well, we can only have four, it creates an unnecessary restriction and limitation of the learner's thinking. Um, is it, and so, you know, as we think about our content, remember that design allows us to change all of those things. And the fact that there are four multiple choices on a standard question, that has nothing to do with instruction. It has to do with grading. It has to do with the, someone 40 or 50 years ago decided that would be a reasonable statistical number to put on standardized tests to somehow protect against guessing, um, but somehow not make it too complicated to judge in a mass way. Well, we don't have that problem. When we're doing individualized instruction, we ought to come up with the right question for the right content. So just like these fellows came up with a quintet, because that was what this music needed, think about what your challenges require. And again, if you are building a simulation or a, a performance environment where the learner is going to have to make a lot of intricate choices, then throw out the limit of four. Um, figure out what it is that's the right number to challenge your learners. Or, you know, if there's only two, give them two choices, and you'll find that realistic options are going to make your, your questions actually more challenging, more meaningful than if you just stick blindly to these standards that have been set, independent of your Anyway, that's what this concert made me think of when I was thinking of e-learning. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And again, from Washington University in St. Louis, I will sign off here and talk to you again sometime. Bye.